Welcome to this SIGO online training demonstration. In this session, we will provide a tutorial for the process of creating a virtual network interface, or VNIC. A VNIC gives a physical server access to the network resource specified when we create the VNIC. In a prior online training session, we created a server profile. We will now use that server profile when we create a VNIC. Let's go to the XMS server to begin the process. Just like we saw when creating a server profile, there are a couple of ways to start the VNIC creation process. We can use the common task selections, or we can select virtual resources from the accordion widget to see the VNIC summary screen. Then press the new button. The first step in the workflow is to select a server profile. The server profile links us to the physical server that will get this new virtual interface. We will choose the server profile we created in the previous online training session. Then we get to name the VNIC. The name is arbitrary, but this name will be reflected in the host, with the exception of the SX 3.5. More about that later. There is also room for a description that helps provide more details if necessary. Then I must define the termination for this virtual interface. I have the choice of port or link aggregation group termination. Port termination associates this virtual interface with a specific Ethernet port. Link aggregation group, or lag termination, associates this virtual interface with a predefined lag. We will talk more about and create a lag in another online training session. For now, we'll just use the only option available, port termination. Now, I am given a list of all the available ports on the chassis I selected. I choose the port that connects to the physical network I need and press Next. Now I get the opportunity to choose some optional settings for this VNIC. We will choose IP configuration in this session. Other options are covered in other online training sessions or product documentation. When setting IP configuration, I have two choices. I can choose either DHCP or static. Now we have to bring the host into the discussion. If the host is a Windows or Linux physical server, then this IP address configuration is propagated to the host. If the host is running ESX, then this IP configuration is ignored. For ESX hosts, it is the guests that define the IP configuration. Now let me briefly describe the other optional settings on the screen. The last three hexadecimal digits for the MAC address of this virtual interface can be prescribed, or if left alone, the chassis will assign them sequentially. The local ID setting applies to ESX 3.5 hosts only and is important because we cannot allow duplicate local ID settings from different chassis to a single ESX 3.5 host. This is not a concern for ESX 4.0 hosts. Refer to SIGO product documentation for a full discussion of the local ID setting. The trunk mode setting behaves like trunk and access mode settings on Ethernet switches. If trunk mode is checked, then this VNIC will carry traffic from multiple VLANs. If trunk mode is not checked, then this VNIC will carry traffic for a single VLAN. There is a full discussion of VLAN settings for VNIC interfaces and Ethernet ports in the SIGO product documentation. Please refer to it for more VLAN configuration details. The summary screen allows me to check my work before I continue. When I press finish, I get the screen showing me the results of the process. When I close the confirmation screen, I am taken to the VNIC summary screen. Here I can check the state of my virtual interface and make sure it is up and running. It may take a few seconds to complete the VNIC creation process with the physical server. Refreshing the browser will show us when the process is complete. That completes this demonstration of creating a virtual network interface. Now let's turn our attention to the host to see how these virtual interfaces look in different operating systems. To review, we see three VNIC interfaces, one for each type of host operating system. VNIC 4 is on a Windows host, VNIC B is on a Linux host, and VNIC A is on an ESX host. On the Windows host, we can use the device manager to see the virtual interface named VNIC 4. On the Linux host, we can use the ifconfig command to see the virtual interface named VNICB. B. 
On ESX Host, we will use the vSphere client to see the virtual interfaces. However, ESX 4.0 displays Seago virtual interfaces differently than ESX 3.5. In both cases, we look under the Configuration tab at the network adapters configured for a given host. This example shows an ESX host with many Seago virtual NICs listed under the InfiniBand host channel adapter card. The name of the virtual network interface is provided by the chassis and is prefixed by Seago underscore. This example shows an ESX 3.5 host with Seago virtual NICs listed under the heading of Unknown. The virtual interfaces shown are just placeholders defined when the Seago host drivers are installed. In fact, in this example, the only virtual interface configured on the chassis is labeled VNIC1 on the screen. Unfortunately, for ESX 3.5 hosts, the name given to the VNIC by the chassis does not correspond to the name shown by the host. VNIC1 is actually named VNIC A. It's the VNIC we created earlier in this online training session. XMS can show the correlation between these two names, and there is a command that can be run on the ESX host to do the same. That command is ESXCFG-XGMAP. When new virtual interfaces are created on the chassis, they occupy an available position in the placeholder list. The local ID setting is used to assign a virtual interface to a specific position in the placeholder list. Care must be taken not to assign two separate virtual interfaces the same local ID and therefore the same position in the placeholder list. It is worth noting that ESX 4.0 does not need the local ID setting. That completes the process of creating and viewing a virtual network interface. Thanks for watching.